Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-1459. Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-1459 is to be kept within a standard containment vault in Safe Wing C of Sector 25. As of May 16, 2000, only Level 1 Maintenance Technician Valera may view and interact with SCP-1459. MT Valera is to be presented with the opportunity to receive a mild amnestic to ameliorate emotional escalation between testing sessions. In the event that MT Valera becomes unavailable to perform further tests, a new individual is to be selected by the presiding on-site counselor. By executive order, testing is to continue indefinitely. Description SCP-1459 is a modified claw crane arcade game machine that stands 2.3 by 1.2 by 1.5 meters. Like most machines of this variety, it has a central rectangular space with three clear walls on its front and sides, with a white plastic floor and back. However, SCP-1459 is unique in that the inner chamber has no chute where a prize would normally be dispensed. The front panel features two coin slots, a large red button, a microphone, a digital numeric display, a sign that reads, win a cookie, and a thin horizontal slot from which the aforementioned baked goods are dispensed. There is no power cord attached to the back of the machine, nor is one needed, as it is presumably powered via anomalous means. When SCP-1459 is inactive, the central chamber is completely bare. SCP-1459 cannot be forcefully opened or damaged by any known means. When one quarter dollar coin is deposited into SCP-1459, a hatch will open in the ceiling of the central chamber, and a claw carrying an instance of SCP-1459-1 will descend from it. SCP-1459-1 and other materials produced by SCP-1459 are often too large to normally fit in the upper section of the machine. It is unknown if these materials are manifested by SCP-1459 at the beginning of the game sessions or if they are teleported from another location. After depositing the instance of SCP-1459-1, the digital numeric display will present the number of games that have been played previously, and a voice recording will play, urging the player to press the button and describe how a SCP-1459-1 can be destroyed. After this message has been played, the button on the front panel will glow, and the numeric display will initiate a 15 second countdown. The player may then press the button and dictate into the microphone any lethal action that can be performed upon SCP-1459-1, with the only restriction being that players cannot choose a method used in a previous game. SCP-1459-1 are juvenile domestic dogs, Canis lupus familiaris, the breed and gender of which varies. SCP-1459 typically selects a breed that individual players holds the most affection toward. Aside from the seemingly infinite quantity that SCP-1459 contains, instances of SCP-1459-1 do not appear to display any innate anomalous properties and generally behave in a manner consistent with animals of their variety. However, SCP-1459-1 instances may occasionally be subjected to anomalous changes to their physiology or behaviors in order to facilitate the method of destruction dictated by the player. If the player states a method of extermination within the allotted 15 seconds, the hatch in the ceiling of the inner chamber will open and an array of mechanical arms will descend, carrying whatever is necessary to carry out the player's suggestion. Requests for deaths that are not possible within the confines of the chamber will cause SCP-1459 to display additional anomalous properties to carry out its orders. See Experiment Log. Once the instance of SCP-1459-1 is deceased, one cookie will be dispensed to the player via the slot in the front of the machine. Cookie flavors dispensed have included chocolate, vanilla, oatmeal, raisin, strawberry, lemon, white chocolate, and peanut butter. The exact variety dispensed to a given player is often one that the player has the lowest preference for. If the player fails to state a method of extermination, or the method proves insufficient, 
A robotic arm will descend from SCP-1459's hatch and bludgeon the SCP-1459 in one instance until it is deceased. No cookie will be dispensed following this event. SCP-1459 automatically cleans its interior chamber after every game. First, an arm holding a broom descends and sweeps the remains of SCP-1459-1 into a trap door. Next, SCP-1459 wipes down the surfaces of the chamber by deploying arms equipped with flat rubber implements, spray bottles containing a soapy solution, and white clean towels. While this process is taking place, a recorded message will tell the player, Yeah, you're totally going to hell for this. Play again? Experiment Logs Experiment 1 Player Dr. Yeatley Statement Stab it Result SCP-1459 played a sound effect indicating the method of extermination had been previously used. Experiment number 2 Player Dr. Yeatley Statement Chainsaw Result Same as previous experiment Superfluous test logs redacted Experiment number 48. Player Dr. Yeatley. Statement. Shark bite. Result. The hatch anomalously elongated and produced a great white shark, Carcridon carcharius, which proceeded to bite off SCP-1459-1's head and recede back into the machine. Experiment number 49. Player Dr. Yeatley. Statement. Run it over. Result. SCP-1459 produced a tire attached to a spinning mechanism. After the mechanism accelerated to an estimated 2,000 RPM, it made contact with SCP-1459-1. Experiment 50 Player, Dr. Yeatley Statement, Drop it from a great height Result SCP-1459-1 fell through SCP-1459's trapdoor. Fifteen minutes later, it fell through the top hatch at high speed and was instantly killed. Experiment 51 Player Dr. Yeatley Statement Reality Television Result A 1958 General Electric Television set fell on SCP-1459-1. Then the set powered on and replayed the event. Experiment 52 Player Dr. Yeatley Statement Death by Blender Result: SCP-1459 produced and lowered SCP-1459-1 into a brand blender. SCP-1459 sat unharmed inside the device for three minutes, after which a robotic arm pressed puree. The blender was uncovered when this transpired. Experiment 53 Player, Dr. Yeatley Statement, Murdered by its lover Result SCP-1459 produced a second instance of SCP-1459-1, which proceeded to claw and bite the first instance until it died of blood loss. The second instance was eliminated via SCP-1459's default bludgeoning method. Note, only one cookie was dispensed. Experiment number 55. Player, Dr. Yeatley. Statement, Murder-Suicide. Result, as in the first test, a second SCP-1459-1 murdered the first. Following this, SCP-1459 provided the second SCP-1459-1 with a hammer, which the animal ran into repeatedly. Note, two cookies were dispensed. Experiment number 59. Player, Dr. Yeatley. Statement, Crime of Passion. Result, the hatch elongated and a Caucasian woman in a red evening gown emerged. The woman, who has not yet been identified, strangled SCP-1459-1 while sobbing and screaming the phrase, You dog, repeatedly. The woman performed this action continuously for 15 minutes. Afterward, both the woman and the deceased SCP-1459-1 fell through the trapdoor and out of view. Experiment number 57. Player. Dr. Yeatley Statement Drowning in Puppies Result Additional SCP-1459-1 were produced until the entire chamber was filled to capacity. The remaining space was filled with water. God damn it. Note Many cookies were dispensed. Superfluous Logs Redacted 
Experiment number 231. Player, Dr. Lofquist. Statement, Civil War. Result, a man in a historically accurate uniform of the Confederate States Army circa 1863 dismembered SCP-1459-1 with his bare hands. Experiment 232. Player, Dr. Siddle. Statement, the judicial system. Result, 15 additional instances of SCP-1459-1 were produced, one of which wore a miniature powdered wig and a black cloak, and two of which miniature suits. <laughs> a noose was lowered around the first instance head and hanged the instance. The same procedure was applied to the remaining 14 instances. Note, 15 cookies were dispensed, all of which were of the raisin variety. Experiment number 233. Player, Assistant Researcher Kirshner. Statement, Made into cookies. Result, Using kitchen implements and traditional ingredients, SCP-1459-1 was dismembered and incorporated into a batch of chocolate chip cookies. SCP-1459's internal heat increased to an estimated 300 degrees Celsius. SCP-1459 then produced a Caucasian woman in a red evening gown who consumed the cookies while smiling wordlessly at Assistant Researcher Kirstner. Note, a chocolate chip cookie was dispensed. No traces of animal matter detected in its composition. Experiment number 234. Player, Junior Researcher Leishman. Statement, Falling off a roller coaster. Result, SCP-1459's mechanical arms constructed a miniature roller coaster within the internal chamber over the course of three hours. Once completed, SCP-1459-1 rode the ride normally until the loop section, at which point the ride stopped, causing SCP-1459-1 to fall to the chamber floor. SCP-1459-1 was then bludgeoned via SCP-1459's default method. Note, no cookie was dispensed. Experiment number 235. Player, Dr. Hoshi. Statement, Batman. <laughs> Result, a concrete bust of the fictional character was released from the ceiling of the chamber, subsequently crushing SCP-1459-1. The floor remained undamaged. Experiment number 236. Player, Dr. Fillmore. Statement, Knowledge of the Unknowable. Result, An entity resembling O5 emerged from the trapdoor of the inner chamber, picked up SCP-1459-1, and pulled it out of sight. Note, When questioned, O5 denied any involvement in the incident. Experiment 237. Player, D5923. Statement, My Bare Hands. Result, SCP-1459-1 reacted as if being strangled, although no additional presence was observed in the chamber. D5923 reported feeling SCP-1459-1's fur on its hands as it died. Experiment 238. Player, D5923. Statement, Spontaneous Combustion. Result, SCP-1459-1 underwent what appeared to be an accelerated form of SCP-81. For those of you who don't know, that's SCP-81, the Spontaneous Combustion Virus. Experiment 239. Player, D-5923. Statement, Nuclear Detonation. Subject terminated mid-sentence. Result, the resulting explosion was completely contained by SCP-1459. Note, D-Class personnel no longer permitted for testing. Maintenance technician Valera selected for further testing due to low likelihood of K-Class scenarios resulting from her requests. Note 2, 368 cookies were dispensed in rapid succession. The significance of this is unknown. Experiment 240. Player, Maintenance Technician Valera. Statement, Happy Thoughts. Result, SCP-1459-1 was injected with a black substance, convulsed, and collapsed. Experiment 241. Player, 
Maintenance Technician Valera. Statement. Love. Result. A Caucasian woman in a red evening gown emerged from SCP-1459's upper chamber, sat on SCP-1459-1's face, and began moaning in apparent pleasure. After continuing this activity for another five hours, both individuals were removed from SCP-1459's claw. Gross. Experiment number 242. Player, Maintenance Technician Valera. Statement, Old Age. Result, SCP-1459 played a sound effect indicating that the method of extermination had been previously used. Maintenance Technician Valera was unable to think of an alternative method of extermination, and SCP-1459-1 was disposed of in the default manner. Experiment 243 Player, Maintenance Technician Valera Statement Please, no kill dog Result SCP-1459-1 was given a pillow, a treat, and pat on the head by a gloved mechanism. Fifteen minutes later, it was retrieved by SCP-1459's claw. Immediately afterward, SCP-1459 produced a juvenile domestic feline, Felis catus, and exterminated it with a single blow to the head with a sledgehammer. Note, a salted cracker was dispensed. Addendum the following is a manufacturer's mark present on the rear panel of SCP-1459. Brought to you by the good folks at YWTGTHFT in partnership with Sugarcomb Confections. Some anomalies just... Why? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why? <sighs> anyway, thank you for listening if indeed you still are, and you were all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Bad Luck Lou, It's Not a Spoon, Arbiter Soul, The Morrigan, James Saba, Nicola W, Joker Corvus, Kawaii Firekeeper, King Madding, Samurai Corgis, Daniel, NJ Vujak, Justin Day, and Eric Corbage. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Vulcan. Thank you.